Oh, please turn with me this evening uh, to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 14. 2 Timothy 3 verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, Paul's words to Timothy, and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. My well, friends, we're looking at these verses of scripture tonight and uh, my title is, my subject, A Complete Life, A Complete Life. Uh, we looked at this uh, verse, these last two verses, especially uh, this morning, and I just want to take it from a slightly different angle uh, this evening and look at it uh, for us uh, in terms of salvation and the, ne the necessity of the Holy Scriptures, the Bible, to hold on to in life. Well, Paul is writing these words to Timothy. Timothy was uh, a lot younger uh, than the Apostle Paul. Paul, now an aged man, now nearing his, the end of his life. This is his final letter that he's ever going to write. Perhaps he knew it. He was in prison in Rome for the second time, and uh, he's soon to be executed. But uh, maybe he didn't quite know it, but maybe he had some awareness of it. Maybe it had been revealed to him by the Lord. And he writes to uh, his son, his spiritual son, uh, Timothy. And uh, he writes in an urgent way to urge him, uh, to press upon him in these words that he must, above all things, continue in Scripture. He has the Old Testament in mind, but he's also thinking, of course, about his own writings and the other New Testament writings of the time and the Gospels. He must continue in them. Timothy, whatever you do, you must stick by the Scriptures. You mustn't veer away from the Bible. You must hold on to these words. You know about them, you've been trained in them, and you must continue to make use of Scripture and to profit from it day by day by day until your final day. Never lose hold on the Scriptures. Never lose hold, never lose your grasp on the Scriptures. Well, Timothy, he had always, we could say in a sense, known the Scriptures. His very earliest teachers, his, uh, from young, was his mother Eunice and his grandmother Lewis. They were his first instructors uh, in the Bible. And then, of course, Paul, uh, later on, when Timothy was a young adult, took him under his wings, probably under, when he was on his first missionary journey. Uh, either he dealt with him individually and spoke to him, or perhaps he heard the preaching of Paul and sat under his ministry again and again when he visited his hometown. And uh, he was a convert of Paul, a spiritual son. And Paul would have explained Look, from the Scriptures, those things that Timothy was so familiar with, the Messiah was to come, yes, but he was to be a suffering Savior. Yes, he was to come and lay down his life for sinners. Yes, he was to shed his blood to take away the sins of all his people. But that would not be the end of him. He would soon rise, and after three days, he would rise again. And he said, These, this is Jesus. Who I, this Jesus is the one of Nazareth, is the one who has fulfilled all these things. He is the Messiah, and he came to believe in Christ and to receive Jesus Christ as uh, his Lord. So throughout his life, Timothy had this exposure uh, to the Word of God, uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament. He was steeped, we could say, in Scripture. His uh, life as a, from a very young, had been shaped by the Bible's teachings. He grasped the teachings, the doctrines of the Bible. He believed what he had been instructed in, and uh, he didn't reject it. 
So Paul here in verse 14 says, Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Persevere in these things, Timothy. Be constant in them. Live by them. Continue in them day after day. Well, that was a very privileged position Timothy was in. To have been brought up with the Scriptures, to have been brought up, as we could say, in a Christian home in today's context, is a very privileged thing where your parents teach you the Bible. Well, and the parents teach you uh, the Gospel and, and urge you also to come to Christ. So Timothy was very privileged to have this all the way, right from a young child all the way up to his uh, adulthood. But it, the same, friends, sadly cannot be said of most of us. Most of us grew up in a home where the Bible wasn't uh, taught, where the Bible wasn't read. Maybe we, there was a copy uh, in, in the home. Maybe there was a copy on the bookshelf, but it was never pulled down. It was never read. It was never really explained uh, to us. The, the earliest recollection that many of us may have of the Bible is on TV or uh, in the films where you know, people, just before they're about to give uh, testimony in the court, well, they will swear on the Bible. Uh, they will promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And maybe that's all we knew about the Bible. Oh, yes, we knew it was some religious book. We knew it was some uh, book that people pay much attention to. But we were ignorant of the contents of the Bible. We didn't really know what it was saying. We didn't know what the message of the Bible was. And it certainly wasn't our guide in life. I remember for myself, I grew up as a Roman Catholic, very avid Roman Catholic. I, uh, I remember going to Mass by myself, never under compulsion really. I chose to do it. I can never really ex remember the Bible being read in all those uh, services. It was never, certainly never explained to us Perhaps bits and pieces were read, but they were never explained to us as uh, we're, we're doing uh, tonight. I knew about the Roman Missal. I knew about the order of service. I knew as an altar boy when to ring the bell at the, when, when the priest does certain things. I knew about even the funeral service in, the, in that sense. I knew of auricular confessions, but I didn't know what the Bible was teaching me. I knew what the church was saying and its teachings. I knew next to nothing of the Bible. Oh, friends, uh, that may be your case as well. That may be your, your, your situation as well. Maybe you too grew up without the Bible. And the thing that happens to us is that if we grow up without the Scriptures, then as we go on through life from that young age into teenagehood and into young adulthood and so on into middle age, Along the way, we are bound to pick up other teachings. We are bound to pick up other ideologies. We are bound to pick up other ways of thinking. We are bound to imbibe something from our environment. Maybe we weren't always an atheist. Maybe today we are an atheist. But we, were never, we weren't always an atheist. Maybe I grew up, well, definitely when I, was, when I was young, I had some sense there is God, some idea that there is a supreme being, some knowledge that there must be a designer. But as I went on, I heard maybe in my school, or maybe I heard uh, an eloquent speaker say to me, there is no God, and he convinced me because he used, because of the way he could use words and manipulate words in such a, a way that people are feeding off everything he is saying, and he's holding everyone uh, in his hand, as it were. And because of that, we were so enthused with the speaker that we didn't really pay attention to what he was saying. We just believed because of the charisma of the, of the person who was speaking. It may be we've picked up things like this ourselves along the way. Other things are bound to have come in and affect us and made us think and believe what we believe uh, today. These are the ideas that have shaped me and influenced me today, and rather than the Scriptures. So I said it may have been, I'm, uh, uh, and I may hold this evening an atheist position. No God, 
no creator, no designer of all things. Life had just come about by chance. Everything is just by chance. It's just an accident that we are here. It's just an accident that this beautiful, amazing world, ordered world that we live in, has just come about by, by fluke. Oh, friends, is this it? God didn't give us life. We say to ourselves, it's come about by, uh, by chance. So because that is so, then I must just live for this world alone. I must, reason can explain everything. Man can explain everything. He can't. Science can explain everything. It cannot. It gives the impression it can. It gives the impression that it's found the answers to all of life's questions. It hasn't. Think about it, friends. It hasn't. If you go into it, but if I come down, maybe I'm in this position today, when I think like this, I think this is all, the world is all I have to live for, so I might as well make the most of it. I might as well try and get the, the best things in life. I might as well try and be as materialistic as I can, because when I die, that's it. That's the end of me. I'm gone. There's no more to me. Not true, but that's maybe where we think. Maybe perhaps I've picked up along the way uh, the idea, yes, there is a supreme being. Yes, there is a God. But I think of Him as a noble. I think of Him as a, a distant God, a God who doesn't care about me, a God who's so far away, and He's so big, anyway, and I'm so small. What, what thought will He give to me? How can I know Him? Does He know me? Perhaps He knows me, but I, how can I relate to Him? He's so far away. Surely he's not interested in me. We may think like that this evening. Or perhaps there is a religious side uh, to me. Perhaps I do believe in God. And I do believe in the Bible to a certain degree. And I do believe in heaven and hell. But I've misunderstood salvation. And I th I've, th I've thought, well, as long as I'm a good person... As long as I don't do anybody any harm, as long as I go to church uh, once a week, that's enough. And as long as I try my very best not to use bad words, and I don't smoke, and I don't drink, and I try and do some good to other people during the week, oh, that'll be enough. God, is, God knows, isn't it? God knows I'm not perfect. God doesn't expect me to be perfect, does He? I'm sure He will just accept me because I'm sincere. Well, we may think like that, friends. Is it right? God will accept me to heaven is, as long as I give Him my very best. Or oh, another, uh, an, another person may, may think little about uh, eternity. Perhaps I'm here again. And I was, in fact, I was, I, just, I was reading about uh, uh, somebody. Uh, he was actually a presenter of the Today program. Now retired. But uh, he, he got uh, cancer, I think it was prostate cancer, and uh, he was talking about his life, and he was talking how uh, it, it brought him to think more about his religious faith. He was a Catholic, and it brought him to think more about it, but he thought about it, his religious faith only as a way of life. Would, uh, somebody asked him, well, does, did it make you think about eternity? Did it make you think about the future? What happens after you die? He said, oh, no, no, I've never been such a deep thinker. And even this cancer that has happened to me and this sickness that is soon going to end my life, well, I, I, it still hasn't affected me in that way. I still am not a deep thinker about eternity. I just take my religion for this world, for this life, for this time. It's a nice way to live my life. Well, friends, is that the way that we think? if we hold on to these non-biblical kinds of ideas, well, the last thing, the last piece of advice that we can give to you is continue in them. Paul could say to Timothy, continue in the Scriptures, continue in this good way, because it's God's way, because it's God's ideas, because it's scriptural, it's good for you, it's right, it's a safe way to go, and you can trust in these things. And so he bids him continue in these ways, Timothy. But these non-biblical ideas, and I've only mentioned just a few, well, 
The last thing you should do, friends, is continue in them. The first thing you should do is abandon them. Cast these thoughts away. Reject them. Because they, will, uh, they have eternal consequences. How you think, what you believe is going to affect your life, how you live, and that will affect your eternal destiny. Your eternal destiny depends on what you believe. What is your position for life? To hold to an atheist position, a secular position, to embrace and adopt human ideologies, ideologies, is hazardous. It's spiritually hazardous to our souls. It's dangerous for us, friends. And if we, to, it's dangerous to my spiritual well-being. If I will not let these things go, if I continue in them, then there are eternal consequences to that. An eternal separation looms from me forever from God's presence. That's how important, that's how vital what we believe is. Why take such a risk with your soul? Why build your life, friends, on such an uncertain foundation as these things? Why not trust in the Word of God? Why not come to the Word of God? The Word of God alone is true. The Word of, lo- word of God alone, uh, oh, 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 is alone is certain. It is believable. It is dependable. It comes from a God who cannot lie for whom it is impossible to lie. Millions have found these words to be true and right. They have proved it in their life. And so, friends, uh, do the same. Do the same. Abandon uh, the other thoughts and come and believe the Scriptures. Verse 15, uh, And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. The, this book, the Bible, wonderful book, is given to make us wise. Only in the Bible do we discover the way of salvation. Only in the Bible, do, uh, only the Bible is designed to make men and women holy and to bring them Uh, into a place where they are accepted before God and in a right relationship with Him. Holiness before God. You visit your local bookshop or online library, maybe it might be these days, and you'll see uh, all kinds of books are available. All written, of course, by men. You can be thrilled by mystery or you can uh, tickle your emotions with uh, a romantic novel. Or you can be stirred by biography or or history. You can get tips on gardening. Or you can get tips on uh, business uh, tricks, how to improve your business, how to make money. Or there are all sorts of books available. But none of them tell you how to be holy, really. None of them tell you how to be accepted with God. None of them tell you how to get to heaven. Only the Bible does that. Only the Bible tells you how you can connect with God. Only the Bible can enlighten you on the way to be saved and to have all your sins forgiven and to know God's love and blessing in your life. Only the Bible educates you on the way to heaven. Oh, friends, this is the direction we need from Scripture. When I was in a a foreign country, I won't mention the country, to save face of people. But uh, when I was in a, in a foreign country, well, if you ask somebody for directions, uh, they would point in one direction or, or another, even if they didn't know the right way. How do I get to such and such a place? Well, they would say, go along that street. But actually, <laughs> the, the proper way was the other way. But they just didn't want to lose face, and they didn't want to t- look as if they didn't know, and they, they couldn't help you. Well, friends, we don't need guides like that. We need guides who know. We need a sure guide uh, to heaven, to God. And that's what the Bible is. A sure, trustworthy guide. One that you can uh, build your life upon. One that you can uh, wholeheartedly give yourself to. And this Bible teaches us that salvation is found in Jesus Christ. 
It makes us wise unto salvation through faith in, in Christ Jesus. The Bible tells us we cannot save ourselves. We need a Savior. We are not good enough for God. We must only come before Him as beggars and plead with Him, Lord, have mercy upon me. Be merciful to me, a sinner. Save me because of Christ. Lord, I trust in Christ. It's coming and understanding what Christ has done, that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came from heaven and gave His life on the cross, that He shed His blood to take away the sins of all who will trust in Him. And I look to Him. The Bible says, look to Christ and be saved. It's so simple. Look to Jesus and be saved. Trust in Him. Trust in You need the Saviour. The Bible educates me. It's not good works that can save me. It's not a good life. I'm a wretched person after all. How can I, my good works be accepted before a God who is perfectly holy and expects a standard of perfect holiness from me? 50% good, 60% good, 80% good. It's not good enough for Him. It must be 100% with God. And He provides forgiveness for all my sins. He provides that perfect righteousness uh, in Christ, as we'll see in a moment. But this is what the Bible directs us to. Faith, we need the Savior. And without the Savior, I cannot be saved. I cannot save myself. Believe in Him, it says. Trust in Him. That's all you need to do. Trust in His death and you will be saved. But can I trust the Bible? Is it really reliable? Yes, friends, without a doubt. Look at verse 16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. That word inspiration means breathe. All Scripture is God a breathe. That, in other words, it comes from God's mouth. These words that we have from Genesis to Revelation, you can trust it because it has God who has spoken it, each and every word as originally given, it comes from, from him, him, from God Himself. And as I've said, the nature of God is such that He cannot lie. It is impossible for God to tell a lie. Oh, it's something maybe we are so familiar with, but to Him, He cannot do it. He cannot do, uh, he cannot lie. It's repulsive to him to lie. He is the God of truth. He can only speak the truth. He can only give the truth. He cannot, he can only be honest with people, with us. He cannot tell a lie. There is no deception at all with God. He hates lying. He hates deception. He hates fake news. It's impossible for him to do it, friends. God is not a man that he should lie. If he says something, he will do it. When he tells you, believe in Christ and I will save you and I will forgive all your sins and I will take you to heaven, you believe, he'll do it. That's his promise. And he always, always, always keeps his promises. If it doesn't happen to us, it's something wrong on our side. It's something the matter with us, but never on His side. Oh, friends, God is no fraudster. God is no scammer. God is, uh, doesn't have any ulterior motive like salespeople who come to you who only want your money and don't really want uh, to do you any good. They've got some ulterior motive, perhaps. Not all of them are like that, I know. But God is not like that. God is... He's got no ulterior motive. He's concerned about your soul. He's concerned about your eternal well-being. His, your good is what He desires. This is what He is after. Your well-being. And you can, He gives you His Word to help you, to bring you to Himself, to save you, and to bring you to heaven for your good. That's what it goes on to say. The Scripture is profitable useful for you and for me. If it's for our benefit to do us good, to change us for the better, to bless us, to, to make us a blessing, 
The Bible teaches us, friends, how to live a good life and a happy life in relationship with our Maker. Look at it for doctrine. It's useful for doctrine. It teaches us about God. It teaches us what He is like. It teaches us that God is a trinity, one God, but God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It teaches us that He is a holy God. It teaches us about the day of judgment that is sure to come. It teaches me and you that we are accountable to God, that at the end of time I must stand before Him and relate to Him how I have lived my life, what I have believed, have I received Christ, have I rejected Him? It goes, it explains these things to me and so much more. It reproves, it's given for our reproof to convict us, to show us a true picture of ourselves. It's only the Bible that really tells us the truth about ourselves. It shows us, friends, that we are unholy, that we are sinful, that we're deserving of judgment, that we are deserving of hell. That's not a kosher thing to say. But that's what the Bible tells us, the honest truth with us. That's where we deserve to be because of our sins against a holy God and our offenses against Him. Because we've been proud and rebellious against our Maker. He's been so good to us, but we've rebelled against Him. And He ought to humble us. The rebukes are sent to do us good, to humble us and make us repent and realize, Oh Lord, what a fool I've been to live in this kind of a way. Have mercy upon me. I, I, I ought not to continue living in this way anymore. I repent of my sins. For correction, it goes on to say, to correct our, the, the errors in our way of thinking, the misconceptions that we hold on to. The Bible helps us to change in that way those things in our lives and for instruction in righteousness to show us the righteousness that we need. It tells us, let go of your own righteousness and trust in the righteousness God has provided for us. Christ's righteousness, that perfect righteousness is given to us the moment we believe in Christ. On the one hand, we are forgiven all our sins and alongside that, we are given the perfect righteousness of Christ to have as our own, to have as our covering. This is what we need. This is what the Bible directs us to, friends. Oh, how we need the Scriptures. Without these things, while well, we are incomplete in life. Verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. It's speaking primarily here to Timothy as the preacher, pastor, that he may be perfect, that not perfect without fault, but it means complete. The word means complete, and it's the same for us. We could apply it for us uh, this evening. Uh, without the knowledge of salvation, without God in our lives, without a right relationship with Him, well, our lives are incomplete. Our lives are only half-lived. God made us for Himself. But we have gone away from that original design. But the Scriptures are given to bring us back to it, to make us realize this is why you were made. This is the purpose for your life, to live for God, to glorify Him. The, purposes are, the, the Scriptures are given to complete us again. We have deep longings in our hearts that can only be satisfied by God, by the Lord. And that's what uh, this salvation does. Friends, without the Scriptures, our life is incomplete. Without salvation, our life is incomplete. It's only but partially lived. Without salvation, life is but a fr only a fraction, not a whole. We're just living a fraction of what life was really meant to be. It's only salvation that completes us. And when we come to the Lord, then we realize, oh, now I know. Now I understand the purpose of my life. Now I know why I'm here. Now I'm fulfilled in life. Instead of always having that longing, that urging, oh, something's missing. Something's missing still in my life. We try all this 
pleasure and that other way of, that the world offers to us, never obtaining satisfaction. It's only when we come to the Scriptures and to God Himself, then we come to a complete a life. Well, friends, are you content? Are you content to live a life just as a fraction instead of to live a complete life? Or may I urge you in closing, read the Bible. Don't put its message uh, to one uh, side. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. That's the complete life. That's a wonderful life that He offers to us. This is what the Scriptures tell us. Come to the Scriptures. Be a reader of the Bible. Be a believer in its message. Take it from God. When you open it, uh, know that God is speaking to you. Ask Him to speak to you. Ask Him to show you the right way. It's His voice. It's His words. Don't neglect it, friends. Would you neglect a will that had your name in it? If the details are being read out, would you fall asleep during that time when the will is being read out? Surely not. Surely you'll be all years wanting to hear what is being said. Are you lazy, friends, to read the book that will show you the way to heaven? Does heaven mean so little to you? Are you not bothered whether you go to heaven, whether you go there or not? Surely not. Surely not. Here, friends, is where we learn of the Savior and of His mighty love. Wonderful love. There is no other book like the Bible. No other message like this message. Like it was once said to Augustine before he came to salvation and he heard the words, not sure exactly where it came from, take up and read. Take up and read. And he took up the Scriptures and he read from Romans 13 and the, one of the verses there sprang out and he was brought to be convicted of his sin and to turn to the Lord. The Scriptures uh, God used so also for us. Turn to the Lord. Let us come to Him, friends, repenting of our sins, trusting in Jesus Christ alone and yielding ourselves to Him to, uh, for all that we need in this life and in the world to come. Oh, may the Lord complete us as we hear and believe His Word. Let's pray together. Our gracious God and Saviour, how again we are thankful that Thou hast given us Thy Word, without which we would be lost in sin and lost forever. But we thank Thee for Thy Word, which points us to the Saviour and all that He has done, or oh, may it be uh, our portion even this night that we may come wherever we are in life's journey. Tonight we may come to Thee and delay no longer and put our trust in the Saviour and yield and give ourselves over to Him. May it be ours, O oh Lord. May it be our portion. May we know Thy blessing. We ask in our Saviour's name. Amen. Well, let's close by singing our final hymn, number 412. Come, O Thou, O Victorious Lord, 412.